Coming up on Network Africa. Gunmen killed three people in a raid on a commercial bank in northeast Kenya. Botswana's former president, Ketomile Mazire, dies at the age of 91. And later, opposition parties in the Democratic Republic of Congo call for more international sanctions to force the government to hold elections. Welcome to the program, I'm Joker Rogers. The police in Kenya say gunmen have attacked a bank in the town of El Lac in Mandera County, killing at least three people, including one police officer. This comes as the Kenyan Red Cross says an improvised explosive device was also detonated on a road in the same town. No injuries were reported there. In the past, Mandera had been the scene of frequent attacks which killed dozens of civilians and security personnel. Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Shabaab have taken responsibility for most of them. el Wak, where today's attack took place, is near the border with Somalia. We now have uh, Ted Otieno joining us uh, from Nairobi, Kenya. You're welcome uh, to the program. We're going to be talking about uh, those attacks in Mandera County. Welcome to Network Africa. Thank you very much. Good evening to you. Yeah, good evening. Uh, what more can you tell us about this attack on uh, Mandera County? Well, uh, yes, indeed, the attack did happen uh, in a town called the Iraq, which is the city of Mandera County. Of course, um, I guess, unlike the report, so the chief received three people died in the attack. A uh, security officer was uh, guarding that particular local bank. And of course, there was uh, also uh, two civilians. There were two civilians who were also uh, murdered in that particular attack because they just drove in a vehicle. That is, the target, there were four of them. And uh, right after driving into that particular driveway, they got out of the car, they shot that the, the, the security officer, and uh, two others, of, of which now the two are uh, security, or uh, uh, civilians, rather. Has anyone or group claimed responsibility for this attack? Well, um, you know, of course the government has its own uh, reservation about it. Uh, there's still a lot of details about it. Uh, whether or not uh, there is any uh, you know, reinforcement of any sort. Then, at the moment, police are keen to take uh, note of uh, how they can be able to avoid democracy. Uh, such as uh, what just happened uh, last night in uh, Mandera. It seems uh, Mandera County has recorded quite a high number of uh, criminal attacks in recent times. Uh, what's been done to combat this menace yeah. by the government? Well, um, just a few uh, days ago, we had uh, the interior carbon factory. His name is uh, Joseph Nkaiseri, maybe then will be tired. Of course, he gave Kenyans the assurance that police are working day and night, 24 hours, all around the clock, just to ensure that the security of the country is at its best. Of course, um, just by the virtue, we are looking at a time when Kenya is actually going to the election and there is more deployment of officers across the country to ensure that the security situation is actually maintained at a high level. You know what I mean? Incidents do happen, but this uh, particular one did happen uh, last night. But then again, um, it, it is something that's going to take the government into, you know, it's going to put the government officials into their uh, feet, onto their feet. And of course, they'll have to make sure that uh, they ensure security, full security for all Kenyans. Ted, uh, how are Kenyans okay. reacting? Uh, to this attack in Mandera. Safety in that county must be a touchy subject right now, and as well as, you know, the rest of the country. Well, I did have a conversation uh, with a few Kenyans around the street, and of course, expressing uh, anger. Most of the Kenyans around there are of the opinion that the government should show that there are more officers deployed, there are more centers uh, working for this unit, uh, across uh, most of this danger zone, so if I may say so. And of course, everybody is of the opinion 
Uh, most of the people I actually talk to are of the opinion that insecurity at the border point is actually at its lowest right now because, again, uh, you do realize it is, um, you know, it, is, it, it, it comes at a time when Kenyans really are pushing for, uh, you know, the installation of security and more so in these hotspots. We had uh, the Inspector General of India, they talked about how they're going to ensure that all the counties that have been here at this hotspot are going to have more officers deployed. There are going to be, uh, you know, more continent of officers across the center. And again, Kenya. Kenyan journalist Teddy Otieno speaking to us from Nairobi. Let's take a look at other news. South Africa has reported an outbreak of a highly pathogenic H5N8 strain of bird flu at a farm in the Free State Province. That's according to an agricultural industry body group, Agrisa, who revealed this today. South Africa earlier this month suspended all trade in birds and chicken products from neighboring Zimbabwe after it reported an outbreak of the same strain at a commercial poultry farm. Here in Nigeria, the Anambra state government in the southeast of the country is, has been allaying fears of a Lassa fever virus outbreak in the state. The Commissioner for Health, Dr. Joe Akabuike, explained that a patient was taken to Chikwemeka Odimegu Ojuku University Teaching Hospital, Amaku, in the uh, Orca South local government area of the state with a history of fever and bleeding. According to the doctor, the patient has now been transferred to the Lassa Fever Institute in Ira, Edo State in South South Nigeria for further analysis. The State Minister of Health, especially the Epidemiology Unit, has commenced the identification of contacts with the patient and the total of 63 people were identified. That one of them are mainly workers, are mainly health workers and students and they are classified as high risk. They are currently being followed up using the necessary sovereign tools. And three of these patients who develop fever have been tested at Tirua and they are negative. We also want to assure the people of Anambra State that the case is fully content and we have not had any other case. And the, the people that we are following up are doing very well. Today is the second week of the follow-up of all the isolated cases and they are doing very well. Uh, it's very, very important that our people has also have to go back to the current call of the government to improve our hygiene, both the environmental, immediate environment and our homes, particularly the things that has to breed rust and other contaminants that may lead to Lassa fever infection. The management of Queen Ede Girls Secondary School in Ikwabwaha, a local government area of Edo State, has made an appeal to the government to come to its rescue by tightening security around the school premises following an alleged encroachment by herdsmen. In an interview with Channel's Television, some students and members of staff bemoan the absence of walls around the compound, leaving them vulnerable. Normalcy seems to have been restored to the Quineda Girls Secondary School premises in the Kubaha local government area of Edo State, following an alleged encroachment by herdsmen. This amateur video footage captured some of the events in the school's premises on Thursday morning. It shows a heated argument between a member of the school staff and a herdsman over claims on human rights. The people were here in the night. The night? Because they're going to stay here. Yeah. The head girl of Quineda Girls Secondary School recounts the early morning incident. When I got here, I saw some, like you can see, some cow fruits on the ground. I went there, I saw some it's from materials for some people. I saw clothes, bags, and some plates and cups they used in eating. I got, when I, I just entered my class and dropped my bag. When I came back, when I, I just looked at this side, they, so I saw some cows coming out from our school farm, those areas. So then the students came out and started chasing them. I even saw a bag there that belonged to a man. Before our principal came, she started, um, she now videoed it, she now called for this. I went to, started the assembly and went to class to literally. For the school's authorities, the situation is likely to worsen as a result of the poorer state of the school's premises. This is not the first time. It's a, a kind of reoccurring decimal. They come in at will. 
and mess up the whole pre premises. The school, we don't have security, there is no fence, the whole place is, being, is porous. Also, we are appealing to the state government to come to our aid. This is the plight that we face, and this is purely a female school, and they are taking advantage of the fact that they are only girls, and they will not be able to do anything about it. Just a few weeks ago, a similar incident of alleged herdsmen invasion was reported at Oowe Primary School, also in Ikwebaka local government area. Queen Edda Girls Secondary School has now joined the list of those pleading with relevant authorities to ensure adequate security in the area. In East Africa, many Tanzanians have condemned President John Magafuli's comments that schoolgirls who give birth should not be allowed to return to school. An online petition has also been set up to get the president to reverse his comments on Monday. President Magu fully warned schoolgirls at a rally that after getting pregnant, you are done. A law passed in 2002 allows for expulsion of pregnant schoolgirls. The law says the girls can be expelled and excluded from school for offenses against morality and wedlock. Meanwhile, the president also says that the men who impregnate the schoolgirls should be imprisoned for 30 years and put the energy they use to impregnate the girls into farming while in jail.